Greetings, YouTube. If those of us who have been in the uh, RPG community long enough, you've probably encountered the phrase fantasy heartbreaker. You may have encountered a fantasy heartbreaker as well. Um, the one that pops into my head is a game called Imperium, which was a fantasy heartbreaker. Now, while the term is called fantasy heartbreaker, it's also applicable to other genres of role-playing games. So what is a fantasy heartbreaker? Fantasy Heartbreaker is someone's baby. It is a game that was produced by someone, often either a one-person show, almost always a guy, um, one guy, I mean, guy operation, or a very small group of people were involved. Probably this guy's gaming group. And uh, it's a game that they've been developing often for years. Um, they'll tout that as the... Uh, as, uh, Part of their credentials on the on the game itself um and they uh will have a personal perspective on the game that other people are probably going to have a difficult time seeing because see they're on the inside they are inside the hot house which is probably going to be a phrase used in this uh, video title they are hot house flowers they exist within this very protected environment, but within that protected environment, everything is just a-okay. Um, not in the real world, things don't tend to fare as well. Because when you take that hothouse flower out of the hothouse, and you then plant it outside, and it gets exposed to the variables of the real world, you begin to see that maybe that flower or that plant is not quite as robust as you thought it was, and it curls up and dies. Or the equivalent in gaming is that other people look at it and go, wow, we have no use for that, and they don't purchase it. and Or they tear it apart. Um, because a lot of the time I've seen games that very much were written by one person, or they're, they're games that started out as D&D, &D and they modified the game a little, and they modified the game a little, and they modified the game a little, to the point their modifications have now moved past that edge of D&D, &D, and now they're into something completely different. And often it keeps going down, it keeps going in the other direction, and eventually it's its own thing. And they've convinced themselves that it's the perfect thing, that it's the thing that does everything that needs to be done. And that may, may very well be true for their table. But because they're in that hot house environment, they've convinced themselves that the world needs this game. And so they send it out into the world to be to be seen. Um, in I, I would argue that all of Palladium is nothing but house ruled Dungeons and Dragons. If you look at the original Palladium role playing fantasy game before it blossomed into an entire you know, ecosystem of role-playing games. If you look at the original Palladium Fantasy role-playing game, that, to my mind, is nothing but a house-ruled game of D&D. Advanced Dungeons & Dragons, probably second edition. Um, but that's what it is. It just kept getting house-ruled and kept getting house-ruled until it no longer even vaguely appeared to be the same thing as the original. But it was... And I could feel it, and I could see it, and I was totally, I, wow, this is, at the time I didn't understand why I resonated so well with it, the concepts that were being shown to me, but also why I didn't jump on board, because I already had that. I already had a house rule D&D &D game, so I didn't need theirs. I did rip it off for ideas, of course. There are lots, lots of really cool ideas in the Palladium systems out there. And the uh, After the Bomb second edition is still the best mutant creation and, and mutant animal creation rules, in my opinion, that have ever been written. Um, not balanced in the least, but my God, those are fun to play with as, as thought concepts and ideas for designing mutant creatures. Um, but it was modified D and D. When you have a fantasy heartbreaker, it's the same thing. It's, it's gone even further. It's gone. It wasn't play tested like. Palladium was, and it was a smaller group, and they just, they're inbred, and I don't mean that in the physical, actual, 
creepy means, I mean, but like their thought processes become inbred and they become convinced amongst their little clique that this is the thing. And sometimes that gets released to the world and becomes a fantasy heartbreaker. Now, what brings this to mind? I was at a short shop. Um, shoot, what is it called? Pop something or other. It's in Raymond, New Hampshire. It's a gaming and uh, uh, a video game store. They sell both types of stuff and they have gaming spades and stuff. Um, but yeah, it's, uh, uh, it's, it's a nice shop and they have a decent selection of both. Oh, I have a cat in the background crying. I apologize. Of both contemporary and used role playing games. So you can often see stuff in there that you're not necessarily going to be aware of on the on the uh, general store shelves or even see here online and i encountered a game which name didn't even i don't even remember the name of it that was a, most decidedly a fantasy heartbreaker and i was deeply tempted by it um but it was ugly in the sense that the artwork was horrible um the layout was terrible it was boring looking and while it was a fantasy heartbreaker and there'd be some kind of you know, entertainment value in reading it and, and then putting it on my shelf as like part of my fantasy heartbreaker or bad RPG collection. I have quite a few bad RPGs, which I own specifically for that reason. Um, I decided to buy a copy of uh, Fragged Empire instead. It was the first edition Kickstarter deluxe hardcover um, uh, volume. Uh, apparently somebody got into the Kickstarter and didn't like it because the book looks brand new and yet it's sitting on a shelf in a, in a shop. Um, the prices aren't great at this place. Sometimes they're all on the high end, but they do have a selection that's very thorough if you're looking for some older older games. They have a lot of uh, D &D stuff, AD&D stuff and third edition stuff and 3.5 edition stuff um, and a lot of the earlier um, GURPS and all kinds of things like that. But if you're looking for some stuff that's not currently available this shop um hold on a second i'm gonna i'm gonna get this name right um see raymond you know you see how bad i type raymond new hampshire gaming store pop culture cards comics and games there i knew the word was pop was in there that's what it's called it's at 66 new hampshire 27 uh route 27 new hampshire Raymond, New Hampshire, 03077, and they open at 10 a.m. today at the time of this filming. Today's a Sunday. They open at 10 a.m. on Sunday. By God, they are dedicated. Um, but yeah, pop culture. It's a nice little shop, and uh, yeah, their their staff is quite pleasant. Um, when I walked in there, there was just this group of, and this is, I'm saying this is a fat white dude. There's a group of fat white guys having a discussion of Warhammer, and it was like, walking into a skit on on some comedy show i'm like really this wasn't set up as a joke just for me nope fat white dudes talking about warhammer middle-aged guys who have the money to dump thousands of dollars into little plastic men um, so that they can push them around a board and then argue amongst each other of which little plastic man man has eliminated which other little plastic man <laughs> cracks me up man um so why am i doing this because if I, the whole idea of fantasy heartbreakers just just fascinates me how people can come up with something in a very insular tight group think it's the best thing in the universe and then release it to the world and to be shocked when in fact the world does not embrace it as the best thing in the universe i apologize that i have a cat in my face but she's been very needy lately and she's 21 and probably getting near the end so I try to entertain her as much as I can because she needs a lot of attention right now. You're not making this easy, kitty. <laughs> um, so let's discuss fantasy heartbreakers and their science fiction and whatever other genres that they exist because I've read them um, in other genres as well. Um, but they're the hothouse flowers, the games that only exist ah. um, uh, in a very tight group. Because they've convinced themselves they're the best thing that there ever was. Of course, now you're going to walk away, right? Uh huh. Yeah. 